What are the best camera settings for shooting vlogs and action with your GoPro Hero 10? Let's find out. Hello friends and welcome back to the studio. This is Suzy with Gemini Connect and this is the brand new GoPro Hero 10 which just came out in September 2021. We've had this camera for a little over a week now and we just got back from two full days of shooting travel vlogs down in Wilsonville, Oregon. We used the Hero 10 to shoot videos of ourselves, our three-month-old baby, farm animals, and lots of other travel and lifestyle videos down in Oregon. Can you guess how many issues we had with the Hero 10. Zero. No problems whatsoever. So in this video, I'll tell you more about those exact settings that we used, but before that, I'll give you a little disclaimer that we've been using the GoPro ever since the Hero 7, and we film mainly travel vlogs with the GoPro. As a result, we very rarely shoot video clips that are longer than 10 minutes in length. Usually they're you know between two to five minutes, but definitely no longer than 10 minutes. And so that's our shooting style, and I think that's one of the reasons why we were able to to avoid a lot of problems with this GoPro. So in case you didn't know, the Hero 10 again came out in September 2021, and it had a handful of new features that were pretty exciting, such as 4K 120 frames per second slow motion video, HyperSmooth 4.0, which is the built-in stabilization, which means you no longer really need a gimbal when you're using the GoPro. But the biggest thing that pretty much everyone was the most excited about, including ourselves, was the brand new GP2 processor. So that processor means that this GoPro Hero 10 is the least buggy and the most reliable GoPro that we've seen ever since we started using the Hero 7. And another thing that the GoPro came with that I haven't seen too many people talk about is that it has more presets. So the presets allow you to program your settings so that you can easily access them uh, as you're using the GoPro. But unfortunately, you still cannot choose your own preset names, so hopefully in a future GoPro, we'll be able to do that. Now let's talk about those GoPro Hero 10 camera settings, starting with the standard profile. This is also our vlogging profile, and we shoot with these settings for over 90% of our videos. First of all, our resolutions and frame rates. So we almost always shoot in 4K 30 frames per second. And the reason that we shoot in 4K is because it's just enough resolution so that we feel that our videos are pretty high quality when we're viewing them on our big screen TV. And we also have a pretty fast computer and big enough hard drives and memory cards to store that footage. If you happen to have a lower quality TV or a smaller hard drive or your computer just isn't fast enough to process 4K video, you could go down to 1080p, but I wouldn't shoot in a resolution that's lower than 1080p just to future-proof your videos. Now, on the Hero 10 and the Hero 9, you can shoot in 5K resolution. However, for us, we just don't feel the need to be shooting our videos in 5K. Another reason is when you shoot in 5K, that seems to be causing overheating issues on the GoPros. However, if you shoot in 4K 24 or 30 frames per second, then those issues don't seem to happen with the Hero 10. Next is lens, and we tend to leave this in linear plus horizon leveling. Horizon leveling is really cool because you can have your camera be twisting in different directions like this and your horizon remains stable. You can't even tell that your camera is moving. So this is really helpful if you're going to be filming a lot of vlogs as you're walking and talking. Sometimes we'll also pop the lens over to wide or ultra wide if we're trying to capture more scenery or if there's two of us walking and talking and we're not quite fitting in the frame, but most of the time we're shooting in linear. Next is hyper smooth, which is the built-in stabilization in the GoPro and it's the best hyper smooth that we've seen so far. So we tend to leave it in boost if we're walking or moving as we're vlogging, but the problem with shooting with hyper smooth is that it does crop into your frame a little bit. So depending on what we're shooting and just how strenuous our walking or activity is, sometimes we'll drop the hyper smooth down to high just so that we're not cropping into our frame as much. Next is scheduled capture, duration, and hindsight and timer. And we leave all of these settings off because for our standard 
style of vlogging and filming, we just don't need any of those settings. Down in the protein settings, we leave the bitrate on high, and this does increase the file size of your video, but it gives you the very best image quality. So for us, that's definitely worth it. However, if you're short on space, then you might wanna decrease the bitrate down to standard instead. Our shutter is set to auto, the EV comp is zero, or sometimes negative 0.5 or negative one. I do find that the Hero 10 seems to slightly overexpose the image a little bit, especially when shooting outdoors in really bright conditions. So if that's the case, then you might wanna drop the EV just a little bit. Our white balance is set to auto, ISO min is set to 100, ISO max to 1600, and for sharpness, this one is a little debatable, but you have three levels of sharpness to choose from, including low, medium, and high. We never have high sharpness turned on because it just seems to be a little overpowering, but between medium and low sharpness, it's really hard to choose because medium sharpness seems to be a little bit too harsh versus low sharpness seems to be a little bit too fuzzy and slightly out of focus. So for right now, we're choosing to shoot in low sharpness and add the sharpness back in post-production if we feel like it's necessary. But you can probably get away with shooting at medium sharpness if you really wanted to, but I would definitely stay away from high sharpness because it's too overpowering. Now this is brand new on the Hero 10, but there's a different color setting that's been added. So you can choose between shooting flat, natural, and vibrant colors. Flat coloring we usually stay away from unless we're shooting cinematic and I'll talk more about that later on in this video, but for our standard or vlogging profile, we tend to leave the color on vibrant. And that's because we just like brighter, more vibrant colors. If you don't like those vibrant colors and you prefer a more subdued look, then you might wanna go for natural coloring, but I do think that that's a matter of taste. And both Martin and I love our really bright and bold colors. So for us, vibrant is generally the one that we choose. For the final settings, we'll leave the raw audio on off and the wind reduction is set to auto. And we also tend to use the GoPro media mod. So you can use the Hero 9 media mod with the Hero 10, that is a saving grace because we really did not want to have to buy a brand new media mod for the Hero 10. But the thing with the GoPro is that you don't have a built-in microphone jack. So if you want to add an external microphone, which we highly recommend you do, you have to buy either the media mod or the GoPro mic adapter. And that gives you that 3.5 millimeter mic jack. Now the Hero 10 does have internal microphones that are built in. The audio quality is actually decent. It's not too bad, but I do find that there is a lot of wind noise, even with the wind reduction set on. I tend to really like vibrant color. So if it wasn't for our vlogging that we do with GoPro, I would probably just keep it on forever. I would say in general, vibrant is not good for faces unless, I don't know, you're wearing really vibrant makeup and you want that to stand out. So to avoid that wind noise and to get the highest quality audio, which which is really important for vlogging, I really recommend using an external microphone. I did another video comparing six different microphones to use with the Hero 9, and I'll leave a link in the description to that video. But since the Hero 9 and the Hero 10 use the same media mod, it's essentially the same test. And so you can check out that video for ideas about which external microphones work best. If we are shooting with the media mod microphone for the Hero 10, then we tend to have the media mod mic set to front mic. Unfortunately, the Hero 10 still does not allow us to shoot in stereo audio settings. This was something that was on the Hero 8 and it allowed you to shoot with both the front mic and the back mic on the media mod. And it was super handy for two people vlogging teams like us because we really have to be able to capture audio in both the front of the camera and the back of the camera. And unfortunately, they took that setting away on the Hero 9, so you have to choose between shooting with your front mic or your back mic, and that's something that still has not been added back with the Hero 10. So that's one of many reasons why we don't really use the media mod microphones anymore, and we tend to use external mics such as the Rode Wireless Go 2 or the DDD4 Duo, and both of those allow us to have more flexible audio settings that we really need for our style of vlogging with the GoPro. They all have a little bang over their eyes because their eyes are full size on that little tiny face. So this protects their eyes. He's got his baby hair. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> he will have that for a year. 
<laughs> Today we find ourselves doing some fine dining in the fields outside of Portland. So we're at the Middle Ground Farm and they have some outdoor dining space that apparently this is the last night of the season up until next summer. Next I'm going to talk about the activity settings. So these are the settings that we use whenever we're doing action. So most of these settings are the same as the standard or vlogging profile that I just mentioned, but here are a few things that we change for the activity setting. First is the resolution and frame rate. So for this one, we're still in 4K, but I generally up the frame rate to 60 frames per second or sometimes 120 frames per second depending on what we're shooting. The reason why I choose 60 frames per second is because I edit the videos in 4K 24 frames per second and shooting at a higher frame rate means that I can slow down that video in post-production and that's really handy for shooting action. Brand new in the Hero 10 is also the ability to shoot in 4K 120 frames per second, which is great for really slowing down that action sequence. You can also shoot in 240 frames per second, ultra slow motion, but you lose some resolution because you can't shoot in 4K, you're capped at 2.7K instead, which is still a pretty high resolution. And we also turn on hindsight. This was a brand new feature on the Hero 9 and it's still here on the Hero 10 that allows you to capture a few extra seconds of photo footage prior to when you hit the record button on your camera. This is really, really useful whenever you're shooting action and you're not quite sure when that action is going to pass in front of your camera. Next are the settings that I use when I'm shooting indoors with the GoPro. This can be a really variable experience because you really need enough ambient lighting or natural lighting inside of your space to make the GoPro really good at shooting inside. But I do have another video talking all about how to use GoPro as a studio camera using artificial lighting. So I'll leave a link in the description below to that video if you want to check it out. If you do want to attempt to tweak your settings to shoot better in low lighting, then you would want to focus in on that ISO maximum. You could tweak that up to maybe ISO 3200 or ISO 6400 and that would give you a little bit more brightness to play with but it does add a lot of grain or noise to your image and it breaks down your image quality. So it's not the optimal solution. Instead, it's better to have an external light with you instead. Bump the ISO max up to 3200. So this is what it looks like in terms of lighting and stability. I'm gonna walk again towards the bathroom, go to you know the corner areas, like an office space. So it definitely gets a little dark, I can see but not too bad, I think. Stability also looks pretty decent. All right, now the ISO max is up to 6,400, and this is what it looks like inside of the hotel room. Uh, I'm very curious about the graininess factor. I do think it's gonna be a lot noisier or grainier, so the picture quality probably won't be as good. Next is color. I select flat and also white balance, I select native. Now both flat color and native white balance are things that you only want to select if you plan to do post-processing with your video. And in this case, if I'm shooting inside with artificial lighting, then I do want to do post-processing because you can't always depend on your artificial lighting being neutral. A lot of artificial lights inside of spaces tend to be a little bit warm or a little bit cool, and so so you want to be able to correct those colors in post-production and you don't want to select auto white balance for that reason. So the final thing that I do when I'm shooting indoors with the GoPro is not really a settings tweak, but I just make sure that I have enough lighting. Whether that's natural lighting or artificial lighting, you want to make sure that there's enough light for the GoPro because GoPro has always been terrible at shooting in the dark or shooting with low lighting and that's no exception with the Hero 10. There's nothing you can do in terms of settings to really fix that so just make sure that there's enough brightness for the GoPro if you're going to be shooting indoors or even outdoors and finally here are the settings that I use whenever I'm shooting cinematic b-roll video with my GoPro I don't do this often because I'm usually traveling with my Fujifilm X-T3 and I use that to get my cinematic b-roll but on occasion I'll use my GoPro to do that instead and when I do that, the main settings that I'm tweaking are my frame rates and my shutter speed. So the resolution, as always, is 4K, but the frame rate, I choose 60 frames per second. And I tweak my shutter speed, so I take it off of auto, and I choose 1 120th of a second. So it's double that of the frame rate. 
This fits the definition of cinematic or Hollywood-like video, and the reason is when you have your shutter speed be double that of your frame rate, it adds just enough motion blur to make it look like a Hollywood film of sorts. I'll also make sure that the color profile is set to flat and the white balance to native so that I can have more control over my colors in post-production and even add a LUT or a preset if I choose to. I'll also make sure that my hyper smooth is set to boost or to high, but I do find that hyper smooth seems to be tied to shutter speed. So if I manually set my shutter speed and it's set to something relatively slow, such as 1 120th of a second or any cinematic setting, then the hyper smooth sense seems to be turned off and the video is a little bit less stable. So we can get around this though by using a gimbal. And I do have a gimbal that I've been using with the Hero 9 and because the Hero 9 is the exact same form factor as the Hero 10, I can still use that gimbal with the Hero 10. But using the gimbal allows me to shoot in the cinematic setting with that lower shutter speed and still be able to get really smooth footage. Something else that is also very likely to happen by manually setting your shutter speed is that your video is probably going to be overexposed or too bright. And so the way to get around that is to use an ND filter, which is another accessory that you may need to use in addition to the gimbal whenever you're shooting cinematic video with the GoPro or really any other camera. So there you have it. Here are all of my GoPro Hero 10 settings that I use the most with this camera. And again, these settings for me have not led to any problems. I haven't had any overheating, haven't had any bugs or errors with the Hero 10. It's been honestly the very best GoPro that I've used so far. But we'll talk more in depth about this camera the more I test it and I'll come out with the official GoPro Hero 10 review probably in a few weeks from now. But let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video.